Hey everybody, welcome back. So we've been seeing a lot of questions popping up here and there. Uh, questions about hook training and tap training with large constrictors. Uh, people asking, you know, about their behaviors, you know, breeding behaviors, and you know, maybe their male snakes getting a little punchy or something like that. Maybe some newer keepers whose snakes are starting to get a little bit bigger and they're starting to feel a little bit uneasy. Um, so I thought this was a good opportunity to just share with you guys the five things that I do every time I go into one of my snakes enclosures and it keeps it really simple and it, it, I think it really just focuses on the basics that we need to be paying attention to with our animals in order to make sure we have good experiences with them. And we are going to do that with three of my larger constrictors today on Intrepid Exotics. So I was in a discussion the other day and somebody had asked about hook training and you know when the right time was to do it and whatnot and you know i i always say that hook training tap training it's a bit of a misnomer uh we're not necessarily training our snakes we're training ourselves to learn how to observe their behaviors and then act accordingly sometimes that's getting a hook out sometimes it's not um you know you'll, you'll hear a lot of people Myself included, now, especially if we're talking to more inexperienced keepers, talking about always have your hook handy, always have it there. But you're going to see sometimes when I go into my snakes enclosures, I don't always use the hook. And that that's heavily dependent on the snake's behavior. So it's really important that we understand the difference there. The five steps that I'm going to go over that I use, um, and I think really simplifies the whole thing, is observing their actions, observing their reactions, getting their head moved out of the way, getting your hands on them, and then supporting their body. And if you follow those steps, every time you go into an enclosure, you're gonna find 99 times out of 100. There's always exceptions with animals. They're never always gonna do what we want them to. These guys may not cooperate with me today, so we'll see. It'd be awesome if I catch something unusual on video. But those five steps are really key. And I'm gonna start right now with my uh, female motley reed tick she's 13 14 feet long and all of my snakes they're hungry it's feeding time this weekend so i'm going to be going upstairs after this and thawing out rabbits for these guys so we've got the added benefit of these guys being a little bit hungry uh, so that may impact their behavior a little so the first thing that we're looking for right before i touch the lock before i touch the enclosure or anything is i just take a second to observe her body language now before I sat down here, she's pushing at the glass a little bit, you know, it's a combination because it's almost time to eat for her and she does get out a lot. So she does like getting out of her enclosure. Um, and you can kind of see she's riding the edge right there. She's wanting that thing to get opened up. She either wants a rabbit to go in there or she wants to come out. So this is one of those times where I could get myself in trouble. She could, you know, have an active food response as soon as I open that up. And the next thing that I'm going to do is going to help me determine, you know, a little bit more of what her state of mind is. So I just know I need to pay attention right now because she's active. Now, this is just observing her actions. Now I'm going to observe her reactions to this. All right. Now see, as soon as I touch the door, her head's coming up to it a little bit. And, you know, this is one of those times where she's right there. I may not want to open this with my hand right there because, you know, it's really possible for these guys to come around a glass and get a hold of you. So, you know, I'm going to come back here. I'm going to keep my hand away from the glass. And I'm just going to go ahead and open it up. All right. Now I've got my hook here. And I really don't think I'm going to need it. She's not giving me a whole lot of clues, but this snake normally doesn't. When she comes, you know, when the door first opens up, a lot of times she'll just hang her head there and wait. So the important thing is that I make sure that I'm clear of her head. Now her head's over there. I've got the hook. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. Now I just need to get my hand on her and let her know that I'm getting ready to interact with her. And that's just as simple as this. And you're always watching your behavior, you know. A lot of times she'll start arcing up like that. It doesn't mean anything. And she's not paying any attention to me. Um, she's in exploration mode right now. So, you know, 
That being said, I've got my hands on her. She's starting to cruise around a little bit. Now all I got to do is just support her body. And you know, this is one of those times when some people will will get out and they'll start snatching. They might be a little, you know, afraid of where their head's at and so forth. But all you got to do, make sure that that animal feels supported and make sure that you're beyond any kind of a food response or anything. And you can see how she is. You know, even bringing her over here, she knows it's not time to eat. I'm completely comfortable with her sitting up here going wherever she wants to. You know, and she feels comfortable. Not every animal is going to do this now. You know, this has a lot to do with their experiences and, you know, how they've been kept, how you've worked with them in the past. You know, my animals are like this because I do this all the time with them. She trusts me. She knows that once I get her out, she's safe, she's comfortable, and it makes it real easy. So let's go ahead and close the door on her. Back in there, sweetie. So we're going to go ahead now with my Burmese python and do the same thing with him. Like I said, you observe their actions, what they're doing. Then you observe their reactions when you start to mess with the enclosure and they start to see things moving around in front of them. Then you get their head away from you, you get that move, you get your hands on them, and you support their body weight. Now I went through kind of slow with her, just for demonstration. I'm going to go a little bit more quickly with him and start with watching his behavior. Now, as we all know, our animals are all going to act just a little bit differently. And it's not going to be 100% the same across the board for everybody. This particular snake, highly interactive. All yeah, right, buddy. You know, watching his behavior. He's cruising the glass. He sees me down here. You know, I know he's ready to eat. And I also know he likes to interact, just like her. So, yeah. What do you think, bud? So I'm going to go ahead and get his enclosure opened up. And I'm just going to kind of watch his reaction to the door opening up. What's up, buddy? What do you think? Now you just give them a second. Let their mind start working. This is another time. I've got the hook in my hand. I don't need it. He's in straight exploration mode. Them long tongue flicks, nice and slow. He's starting to work his way out of the enclosure. And again, you go about a foot or two behind his head, get your hands on him. And then you give it a second once you get your hands on him so that it gives them time to understand what's going on. And then you just get their body supported. Pick them up like this. And it's the same thing with him. Isn't that right, buddy? You know exactly what's going on. I don't have to worry about you trying to eat me or nothing. Okay. These guys are so mellow and so easy to work with. If you just, you know, spend the time to work with them confidently. And, you know, make sure that you're giving them enough time to understand what's going on. And, uh, they will treat you really well. Even when they're hungry. You know, these are hungry snakes. This is the time when they're supposed to be sizing me up to see if they can eat me. I don't have too much to worry about right here. Isn't that right, bud? This is just a sweet boy right here. And put him back. All right, and we're gonna do the same thing now with my big male reticulated python. Hey, bud. All right, so you'll have to excuse the noise. My Nile monitor is over here ready to go for a walk again. He's right next to the microphone, so. But we're gonna do this again with Tigger. He's my male retake. And he's the most challenging one that I've got here. And even, even though, you know, he may be larger, he may be, you know, prone to being a little bit grumpier, it's the same thing that works for these guys too. Um, so I'm just going to sit here, of course, observing him right now. There's not a whole lot to go on. He's in there sleeping. He's relaxing. So what I'm going to do 
And I make a little bit of noise when I open the enclosure on purpose. You can see his head popped up just a little bit back there. And I need to let him know that I'm here. Make a little bit of noise. And just get the door opened up. And this is one of those times where you've just got to be really careful and really slow and give their brain time to process. You know, clearly he had just woken up. And being ambush predators, if I just throw my hand in there and a sleeping snake, he sees it, he picks up the heat, he can come at me. So I am going to use my hook this time. And I'm going to use it just enough to touch him. Let him know that I'm here. I don't know if you can hear him or not, but of course he's breathing pretty heavy knows I'm here. Get a hand on him. And I'm just going to watch his behavior. Hey bud. Hey buddy. Now the way his head is right there, he pointed right at me. He's in a situation where he could strike at me if he wanted to. So I'm going to come around the other direction here so I'm not directly in his face. And this way I can redirect his head. I'm gonna get his head redirected a little bit. Get my hand on him. And see, as soon as he starts moving, that means that he knows it's not time to eat. He's not coming after me. And I'm just supporting his body. All right, buddy. Just gonna support your body and let you hang out for a second. You know, his behavior is always a lot more energetic than the other ones. You know, if I was to take him outside right now, he'd run around for a good 30 minutes or so before he came back to the house and just wanted to chill out. But you can see how easy it is, even with him. Even with a snake, when they start giving you signs that might be intimidating to some people, you've just got to understand what's going on with them. that up and we're gonna get some bonus Niles footage today just because he's so full of energy <sighs> buddy what you doing crazy boy huh what you doing bud you ready to go outside go for a walk again, ain't ya? Ain't ya? Ready to go play? Such a good boy when he wants to be. <laughs> Always really cautious with this guy though. You know, sometimes he's nice and gentle and just wants to hang out. Something gets his attention and he can get pretty snippy just really quickly, so. Hey. Where you going, bud? Where you going, buddy? <laughs> he's done for the day. So I hope I helped a little bit, you know. Um, like I said, there's a little bit of a misnomer there hook training, tap training. It's not so much about training the snake. It's just as simple as being able to recognize their behavior and knowing what will get you in trouble and what won't. You know, if you touch too close to a snake's head when they've got an active food response going on, you're probably going to have a problem. You know, if you take a second to just move their head away, snap them out of it, get your hands on them really confidently, even when they start moving around quick like that, if you just really confidently pick them up and support them and make them feel comfortable, just like with uh, Tigger, my male retake back there, you know, he started darting around a little bit. As soon as I get him up in my hands and I'm actually holding him like I would a pet snake and not like something that I'm afraid of, he chilled out. He's cool. You know, he can just hang out like that. I can take him outside, hang out with him. He do that thing where he crawls up on me from across the yard, whatnot. And um, it, it makes such a huge difference as opposed to, you know, if I go in there with him like that, 
with the hook and I try hooking him and dragging him out and I try handling him with the hook and he's got that little bar you know prodding up into him all the time and stuff like that and you're afraid to touch him and you're kind of leaning back and poking at him you know you can take a snake like that that's really mellow and you know even when he's a little bit energetic he's still he's still pretty mellow and, and easy to work with and and you can make it really bad so uh, you just gotta take the time to understand them and give them time to understand what's going on and you'll have really good experiences with them now really quick before i go i'm in the process right now of setting up a uh, event out here in north carolina in greensboro uh, it's going to be with the carolina herpetological society and uh, you know I think some fish and wildlife folks are going to be out there. There's going to be some conservationists out there, uh, some folks from the science center and whatnot. Uh, should be a really good time. Uh, going to have you know some fellow keepers from around the area bringing some stuff out, and we're just going to hang out and do a public education thing with folks. So if you're in the North Carolina area, you know particularly around Greensboro, it's going to be the first Saturday in our in, first Saturday in August. So you know by all means. Come hang out with us. Absolutely love to see you guys. Um, yeah, Rob and Jeremy uh, from that do the podcast for uh, Brassman Reptiles are going to be out there. There's going to be a you know couple big retake breeders out there, some other keepers and members of the Herp Society. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Hopefully, there's going to be a lot of people out there, and we want to really get some folks some good educational exposure to some animals. So, um, like I said, if you're in the area, get out there and check us out. Don't forget like the video if it helped you out get subscribed to the channel share it to folks if you got people that are just getting into snakes and they're still kind of wrapped around the axle about man how do i manage these guys you know stuff like this go ahead and share it to them yeah let them see how easy it can be to manage these guys um you know once you're consistent with your animals and you start getting confident with them they can be so easy to work with It'd be such a pleasure to work with but it's on us to put in the effort to learn them and to learn ourselves learn how to push ourselves past our insecurities a little bit so that we can uh you know trust these animals uh once they start to trust us a little bit so thank you guys so much for hanging out with me uh it's good to see you again i know my video schedule has been spread out a little bit still working on this schedule it's kind of tricky having to run a full-time job and the full-time reptile stuff so just bear with me. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, and we'll get back on a weekly schedule here just as soon as I can manage it. But I would rather put out one video every two weeks. It's pretty decent than to just try and put something out every week just to have something out. And, you know, there not be any real quality or benefit for folks. So, yeah, take that with a grain of salt. Anyway, you guys have an outstanding weekend. And I'll see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.